So in an acid-base reaction here, we have an acid reacting with a base. The acid donates the hydrogen to the base. The base accepts the hydrogen. And then you end up with some products. So same thing happening down here. You have a, um, a weak acid and a strong base. We have a double replacement reaction going on here. So let's look at that in a little more in depth and then we'll also write the net ionic equation. Let's look at a strong acid and a strong base. So let's use everybody's favorite strong acid. Let's look at HCl. That's your strong acid and react that with uh, sodium hydroxide. And these are both aqueous. And what I'm going to have a double replacement reaction. So I have an H plus Cl minus. I have Na plus an OH minus. And then over here I have my cations, H plus, Na plus. And now I switch um, my anions. So H now is with OH minus, and Na is with Cl minus. Right? So this is what's happening. Now I can crisscross. HOH is the same as, if that's water, that's H2O. You can rewrite that as H2O if you want to. And NaCl over there. Great. Um, water H2O is, it's a liquid. Sodium chloride is still aqueous. Um, and so now if I were to write the, if we want to get to the net ionic equation, let's write the ionic equation. So this is molecular, right, where we have HCl, sodium chloride, everything's all together. Um, now let's split up the soluble ionic compounds, or the strong acids and strong bases, into, um, into ions. So HCl, basically what we're, we're trying to do now is identify our strong electrolytes. So who are the strong electrolytes? Those are strong acids, right, strong acids, strong bases, and soluble ionic compounds. So HCl is a strong acid. I know that's a strong acid because it's on the list. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base because it's on the list. Liquid water is not on the list. Liquid water, that's just a molecular compound. That's going to stay together. That does not get a star. And sodium chloride is a soluble ionic compound. It's ionic because it's a metal and a non-metal. Um, and it's soluble because sodium is always soluble. So I have three strong electrolytes, and the water is not a strong electrolyte. That's a non-electrolyte. It's going to stay together. So when I write the net ionic equation here, or the ionic equation, I split this guy up. My strong acid dissociates. My strong base dissociates. My liquid water stays together. And the sodium chloride also dissociates. Oops, almost didn't dissociate there. Uh, now, what... What's the same on both sides? I have a sodium plus sodium plus. I have chloride ions. So my net ionic equation looks like H plus OH minus gives me H2O with a liquid. And that's aqueous. And this is aqueous. And that's your net ionic equation. And that's going to happen whenever you have a strong acid and a strong base. You should get the same um, net ionic equation. So let's try another one for a weak acid and a strong base this time. And we'll write the molecular formula, the complete ionic, and the net ionic. So phosphorus acid, that's a weak acid. How do you know that's a weak acid? Because it's not strong. It's not one of the seven strong acids. H3PO4, phosphorus acid reacting with KOH. And what is that going to give us? So this is a weak acid. Right? It only dissociates partially. So if we were, if we were to just dissociate, the ions that it would dissociate into would be the H plus and the PO3, um, 3 minus. Those are the ions that it would dissociate into, but it doesn't dissociate completely. But what would the rea reaction look like if it, if it did dissociate into some ions? These are the ions that you're playing with. So partial dissociation means if I put this in water and I had like a hundred of these molecules, maybe one or two of them is actually going to dissociate into ions. And so let's figure out what kind of products it would form. So on this side, I have H plus and I have my potassium plus. Um, I have my OH minus and my PO3, three minus, wait, oops, K plus. Yep. So this becomes um, HOH or H2O liquid, and this becomes a K3PO3. 
Now H3PO3, that's soluble. KOH, that's soluble. And K3PO3, well, what do you think about this guy? We don't have any rules about um, phosphites, but we know that potassium is always soluble. So this guy is going to be soluble as well. Now, let's identify which ones are our strong electrolytes. H3PO3 is aqueous, right? So you might be tempted to say, oh, yeah, that's it's soluble, so it must be a strong electrolyte. But it's a weak acid. Weak acids don't get stars. That's going to stay together. When I put that in water, it's not really going to dissociate into many ions. So I'm writing the, the ionic equation now. Um, potassium hydroxide, yeah, that's soluble. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to balance. So we want to make sure that we always balance. Um, so I need three, and you'll realize that you didn't balance when you start to write the net ionic equation and things aren't canceling. You don't have the right numbers of things. So make sure we balance. We have, um, we need three waters too. It's easier to kind of think of that as HOH. So I just had three OHs. I'm going to put three in front of here. That gives me three H pluses too, and um, three over here. All right, so now we're all balanced. Now, weak acid, it doesn't get a star. This is a strong base, it will get a star. Liquid water does not get a star. It is a non-electrolyte, and this is a soluble ionic compound. So I only have two electrolytes. The other things stay together. So this is the tricky part with the weak acids. It's going to feel like you want to dissociate that into ions when you write the ionic equation. Um, but the weak acids stay together. The weak survive. The strong ones are going to dissociate. This is a non-electrolyte that stays together. Liquids, solids, gases, they're all going to stay together. They don't dissociate into ions. Uh, but this soluble ionic compound, this one will. And now to get the net ionic equation, cancel things that are the same on both sides, just the potassium. So you end up with your net ionic equation looking like H3PO3 aqueous. 3OH minus, that's also aqueous, three waters, and a PO3, three minus, which is aqueous. So that is the net ionic equation. Let's try one more. And if you want to um, pause and see if you can do it on your own, you can do that. So here we have acetic acid. And this time I put the hydrogen out in front for you. Um, to make it easier to do the double replacement. Usually we'll see this at the end because it's a COOH. Um, that's the hydrogen that's going to come off the one at the end. Um, and barium hydroxide. All right. Okay. So let's, let's see, let's break these up into ions. We have H plus and CH3COO, that's the acetate ion. Um, barium has a plus two charge, hydroxide has a minus one charge. So over here on the product side, I have H and I have barium and H reacts with the OH minus and barium with the acetate. So when I crisscross here, I get HOH. If you want to keep it like that for a second while you balance, like that's fine. And then you have BA with two acetates there. And then you want to balance. So I'll put a two in front of there. I have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydroxides, two hydroxides, one barium, one barium, and two acetates. So we should be all balanced here. Um, this is aqueous, right? They say you're starting off with aqueous solutions. That's an aqueous solution. And then what do we get on the product side? We have a liquid. And then what about barium acetate? So what do you think about barium acetate? What do we know about acetates? They're always soluble. So we don't have any solids forming here. That's okay. We don't have any solids forming. That's fine. It doesn't say it's a precipitation reaction. Um, so we don't have any precipitates forming. So now what are we going to do? We're going to try to figure out who are our um, ionic, soluble ionic compounds, our strong electrolytes. This guy right here, this is a strong base. Barium hydroxide, that's a strong base. Um, barium acetate, that's a soluble ionic compound. Acetic acid, that's a weak acid. So even though it's soluble, it's a weak acid. It doesn't get a star. 
So when I dissociate these into ions, that guy's going to stay together. So for my ionic, ionic equation, I have HCH3COO barium splits up two hydroxides. And I get my two waters. And then the barium and two acetates. So just barium is going to cancel. Everything else stays the same. So I have two. Um, this is aqueous acetic acid, two hydroxides, two waters, which are liquid, and two CH3COO minus acetate ions. And that is your net ionic equation. So be careful with the weak acids. Weak acids do not dissociate into ions.